good morning. Let's do something fun today. I have these two candlesticks that I got at Gypsy Blue Antiques and More in Oakdale, Louisiana. And it looks like somebody already started on flipping them, but I don't know whether they were, this one has a little bit of, it's black with a little bit of gold on the details. This one's just black. So whether they covered the gold with this one or started putting the gold on this one, I don't know. But behind me is a piece that I'm working on for a collaboration called Dark and Mysterious. And so I decided I would take a break for a minute today and do something fun and let's kind of flip these candlesticks to be able to be used in the staging of that piece. And we're going to use DIY paint. I got a handful of brushes here, mostly chip brushes and a couple of one inch ones in case I needed to get into the details. And we have DIY Little Black Dress, which is a black. And we have DIY Letterpress Gray. It's not the same gray as here, but I wanted it to be a little bit lighter than that so we could use the dark with it and kind of get it in together. And then to seal it afterwards, I'm gonna use a DIY Dark and Decrepit Liquid Patina. Underneath my table, I have a blow dryer in case we need it to speed things along here and my trusty old bucket of water and some what are called boats in the restaurant industry like your french fries come in you know what i mean so i have those and i'm going to pour some paint in those but my work surface here is kind of tiny so let me move some stuff out of the way i'm going to look for the crappiest chip brush I have for the first coat. I'm going to just pour so that I don't continuously dip and re-dip because this isn't going to take very much paint. Um, I don't want to contaminate my paint. This one, I should have saved this to show y'all. This was like, it wasn't hard as a rock, but you know, you would think it would be like a dried tar spill in here this morning. And because I left the lid cracked a little bit the other day. Shame on me. And the water evaporated. But that's what's so cool about the um, DIY paint is I just went in back and put some water in there. Oh, let me tell you. I put some water in there and then I was trying to stir and stir and stir with this stir stick. And I splattered it all over my glasses, all over my face. So I'm kind of glad y'all didn't get to see that part. But it happens. So now I have perfect consistency paint again and i'm going to pour a little bit in one of my boats to begin with so this is still pretty thick this paint's notoriously thick to begin with a definite asset whenever you're doing this kind of stuff so i didn't want to thin this one down any and get some in here stir it up real good to mix everything up get my, get myself some out See if I can put it somewhere where I won't knock it over. And here we go. And again, I'm just gonna do this with a chip brush because I want it to show a little bit of texture. I love this little table. I call this my painting table. I don't know if you can see it, but it has, I did like a paint pour on it, painted it yellow and then did a paint pour on it. And I use it just to be my side table to hold my paints and things like that um, whenever I'm working on a piece most of the time. But I'm tr really trying to work this in. And you know, when you get a chip brush, you get a bristle now and then, but that's life. I'm really trying to work this down into the crevices because with this being a clay-based paint, man, this thing is shedding. With this being a clay-based paint, you know, it has that little bit of texture, kind of a... Oh, not exactly like a stucco texture, but it does have a thickness to it and uh, dries hard, kind of like a stucco wood. So I really want that to be changing the highs and the lows of the textures that are on here. There really is a lot of detail on these. Of 
Of course, the paint needs to cure, which takes about 30 days, but it's gonna be dry to the touch in 30 minutes. I have a fan going right here because it's hotter than heck where I'm at, and that's gonna help to dry it faster. And I normally, if I was putting this on a piece of furniture and wanted it to be a little bit smoother, of course, I wouldn't have a fan right there drying the outer surface faster. But because I want this to be old looking, that don't bother me one bit turn this over because a lot of times and this is a good tip too a lot of times when you're doing a piece you can't see from the upside down and then you're done and you think oh that looks so great and you pick it up to move it and underneath the drawers and underneath the doors and all those other underneath areas still have the old color and you didn't know you thought you were done and you weren't done you weren't done at all don't ask me how i know <laughs> making sure there's no drips or anything because I am laying this on pretty thick. But let me give you this one more tip. If I had a drip with this DIY paint, it's water activated. And just because it dries doesn't mean anything. It's still gonna be, uh, it's water-based, but it will be reactivated for what with water. So if I come back to this later and I look and I'm like, dang, I missed that run. All I gotta do is take a damp rag and wipe it off. The whole run will wipe off. Until this is this paint is sealed, it is, uh, you know, you can remove layers of it, add to it, do, do all kinds of things to it until it's sealed. There's what I'm talking about. Don't know if y'all can see under there, but underneath this top part, no place left to put my fingers, there's no paint. So I thought I got it all and I absolutely didn't. So I just wiped off these before I started. They're, they're heavy, it probably is some kind of ceramic. I just wiped them off with a damp rag to start with. With the DIY paint, it sticks to most anything. You don't have to do a lot of, you know, priming or prepping on most surfaces. You can just, and this is a little bit textured already, so I um, just had to clean it and slap in the paint right on there. Trying to get my unders first this time. If you think a whole lot about what you're doing ahead of time, you probably do do this first, but I'm generally in it for the fun. And the fun part of me just wants to jump in there and see it be a different color in a minute. See how it's lighter on top than down here? That's where it's dry already. When you're using the DIY paint, when it dries, it's gonna dry a whole lot lighter. See how much lighter that is? When you put the wax or the top coat back on it, it sort of rehydrates that and it goes back to being the original color that you painted it. Still needs more drying but I just want to show you that. See how it's lighter? You can still see darker in between there and behind it. That's where it's still wet and this is where it's starting to dry. That's absolutely gorgeous if it would have stayed that way. This is not completely dry, but it should be dry enough, and I wanna show them to you. There's dry and still wet. See how much difference? Okay, here's the other tip I was fixing to share with you. Remember a second ago, I told you how the DIY paint gets reactivated when you wet it. So if there would have been a drip, I could have just wiped it back off with a wet rag. It will also wipe off when we put another coat of water-based paint on there. So we have to be very careful when we, when we start that process that we're applying paint on here, not taking paint off of here because it can be really 
I cried the first time it happened. I'm not going to lie to you. I would normally do, say, if this was a piece of furniture or if I was really, really wanting to be really particular about the finish, if I wasn't going for this, you know, dark and decrepit kind of a look here, is I would go ahead and put my big top on this right now or, or patina or whatever top coat that, you know, that I was going to be using. You can't do wax yet, but because then the next coat of paint wouldn't go over it. Or you can use, and I don't have one sitting here, but you can use that spray poly or whatever to mist a, a coat on here that's going to prevent the water in your next layer of paint from pulling this paint back up. So you have all those options, but because I'm going to be dry brushing this on, I'm thinking it's going to be okay. If it's not, then you can laugh at me. I don't, I don't mind. Just getting another chip brush and the more worn out, the better when you're doing this kind of thing. And I'm gonna just place it in sideways like this and just get a little bit on it, scrape off the excess, and then I'm just wanting to hit the high areas and hit the details and not perfectly, not to where I would want a little bitty brush and be all tight and get it that way. I'm just wanting to hit some of these ridges with the black. Little black dress is what it is. We want to highlight these details or low light these details in this instance, but not apply a whole lot of paint on there. But we want it kind of messy and old looking and all that brouhaha. So I'm just hitting those, the high points. Just hitting the high points. The areas that over time that would have worn down because what we're kind of making it look like is that all of this gray paint is new and this black paint is what's under it that's beginning to show as water and wear and time wear off the new paint. Then there's fluted area up here. That's what they call it whenever there's all those lines. There we go. So now this has to start drying. See how it just looks old and I could just see it being like a Grecian column or something like that. But if you look at this one, it's still wet. See there, it's starting to dry. That's the side the fan's a little bit blowing on and back here it's still soaking wet. So we have to blow dry that one before I can use it. I'm just going to apply the dark and decrepit, which is a liquid patina. Here you could now, here our options uh, with the DIY paint line would be to use crystal clear patina, dries clear, or uh, just dark wax anyhow. That I still may put a coat of this over that, we'll see. But I don't, I'm not wanting to have to dig down in all the details of this with my coats of wax. So that's why I decided to do a patina. And I could do clear, but I decided the dark would deepen this up a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna go with. And if that's not giving me exactly what I'm wanting to look at in the end, I'll come back with either the black wax or the dark wax and just hit some of the upper areas and then buff that out. And that'll give it a little more of that look too. So I wanted to deepen this gray a little bit. So I wanna make sure you can see it really good right there. I'm just gonna use a chip brush. So the other option is, I forgot I was mid-sentence on that, is they have DIY Big Top, which is uh, a water-based poly. So I could have used Big Top, but I wanted to go with a little bit darker with this dark patina, because I wanted it to have a little bit of a brown tone underneath the gray. But if I'm not careful right now, and I wipe too vigorously, with this on here, I will be, because this has, is water-based, I will be removing some of that paint. So I'm having at it, but I'm having at it semi-gently, not enough to remove the underpaint with, I hope.
see here's the difference again of them side by side with the paint drying the paint wet and with the dark and decrepit over it i think i put too much dark and decrepit you probably would have been smarter to use the clear if you're wanting to stay with this kind of look where it's darker that's how it would have been if we just put the clear liquid patina on it now if we put the black first it would have looked like that look before we started but because we're still trying to age it the other options now are to let this completely dry i can still put some black wax over it which i may just to give it that one more layer or you could put a white wax over it and get more of your gray look that way. There you go. I'm gonna continue with this process and I'm gonna make it look just like this. Lighter areas and the details in there, it really does look aged and, and different. Just with the gray not all the way dry and, we'll, and I'm about to put the black over that. The dark and decrepit has dried and it looks wonderful, but it doesn't look how I wanted it to look. So I'm going back, dry brushing on just a little bit of black and then a little bit of the gray to make sure and get it to come out like this one, which I, which I love. This doesn't show a whole lot, but it does give it a little bit more depth of character here. And I do try to keep this brush sideways. And I'm going to do the same exact thing with the, um, I think it's letterpress gray. Because I didn't let that little black dress dry any at all before I started putting this, it's coming out a little darker than that one, but that's cool. And I'm just gonna take this, this one is a bull's eye shellac, and I'm gonna just hit it with this so that this paint stays secure. I could come at this point with big top, liquid patina, wax, anything. I'm gonna do this because it's gonna be done in just a second if I do it this way. This isn't all natural. This isn't safe. It does have chemicals. So that's up to you as to whether to use it. It sure does make life easy on occasion. And now that's done. Boom, done. Ta-da! I think it's going to look really cute and I'll put a staged picture when I finish this next piece. Thanks for joining me while I flipped these candlesticks. I appreciate you. I think they turned out great. Make sure and subscribe and click the notifications button and we will see you in the next video. Remember we do two each week, one every Tuesday and Thursday. And if there's something special you would like to know about, make sure and let me know in the comments and we'll make it happen for you. Thanks, bye.